This past weekend, Konami held a giant 25th anniversary Yu-Gi-Oh! celebration at the Tokyo Dome in Japan. There were a bunch of cool reveals at this event, including 10 new Exodia support cards that are based off of the cards that Simon used in the manga and video games. It'll be a little while until these cards are added into the TCG format, but they were so cool that I just couldn't wait to talk about them. The best place to start is with the new boss monster, the Phantom God Exodia Incarnate. The fusion materials for this card are five five Forbidden One monsters, let's take a look at what it does. This card on the field cannot be destroyed by your opponent's card effects. Once per turn, if this card battles, during damage calculation it gains attack equal to your current life points. Once per turn, when a spell or trap card or effect is activated, quick effect you can negate the activation. Once per turn, during the end phase, you can set one Exodo spell or trap or obliterate directly from your deck. Once per turn, during your standby phase, you lose 1000 life points. When I first read this card, I immediately realized that this was one of the best Exodia boss monsters ever released, and this is only one of the 10 cards cards that they announced, so already we are off to a good start. It has protection effects on the board, it goes up to a ton of attack points, and it even has a negation effect as well. Not to mention that during both players' end phases, you get a free plus one. We'll talk about the cards that this can set in just a few moments here, but first I wanted to show you the normal spell that can summon it. This card is called Millennium Cross, and here's what it does. Take five Forbidden One monster cards from your hand, deck, and or face-up field and reveal them, then special summon one Phantom God Exodia Incarnate from your extra deck. Then, shuffle all face-up monster cards you control into the deck, except Exodia monster cards, whose original level is 10 or higher, and Millennium monster cards, which is the new archetype, we'll go over that in a moment. Also, you cannot summon monsters for the rest of this turn, but you can normal set. After activation, shuffle this card into the deck instead of sending it to the graveyard. This card seems great to me. It is basically a free way to summon the Phantom God Exodia Incarnate, which I love, and it even shuffles itself back into the deck so you can use it over and over again. The downside on this doesn't really matter, although it does prevent it from being splashable, but realistically, if you are playing this monster and this spell, you are probably playing a dedicated Exodia Millennium deck. Now let's take a look at the cards that you'll be setting for free during end phases. Obliterate is a trap card that was released a few years back, and it's basically a bounce every single turn, which in my mind is pretty decent. The first new card that you can set, though, is Raging Hell Hellfire Exodo Flame, which will probably have its name changed in the TCG. This is a normal trap card that says, if you control a level 10 or higher Exodia monster, destroy all cards your opponent controls. Also, if this card is in your graveyard, except during the turn it was sent there, you can banish it and activate one of these effects. Either add one Forbidden One monster from your deck or graveyard to your hand, or shuffle up to five Forbidden One monsters from your graveyard and or banished pile into the deck. And those are all good effects. Effects. To be completely honest, it seems really crazy to set this in the end phase off of that Phantom God effect. You then have a spell trap negate, and you have a board wipe that your opponent has to deal with. Not to mention that it also has extra value in the graveyard, which is great for recycling. Keep in mind that this card doesn't only pair with Phantom God, it's also a really good card alongside the legendary Exodia Incarnate. Previously, that was the best Exodia boss monster, at least in my opinion, so it might still be a good card to include in this newer Exodia. Exodia deck. The other Exodo card is Exodo Blaze, a quick play spell that says, one level 10 or higher monster you control with Exodia in its original name gains these effects. You can pay half your life points. You cannot activate other cards or their effects for the rest of this turn. Also, destroy as many cards in the spell and trap zone as possible. Then equip five Forbidden One monsters from your hand and or deck to this card as equip spells that give it 2,000 attack. If this card attacks a defense position monster, inflict piercing battle damage. I think the idea here is that during your end phase, you place the flame or obliterate from your deck to your back row as an eruption, and then during your opponent's end phase, you set blaze to hopefully set up an OTK. And remember that all of this is being done off of just that Millennium Cross activation. I don't want to oversell these cards too much because we don't really know how competitive they'll be, but honestly, if we only got these four cards that we've talked about, I already would think it was good exotic support. But we actually have six more cards to look at that really round out this strategy. Let's take a look at the Millennium cards to figure out how this theme is supposed to work. These cards all have the exact same first effect, which allows you to place them from your hand to your spell and trap card zone as a continuous spell, and then they have an effect while they're a continuous spell, as well as an effect while they're a monster card. For example, the K 
caveman that awoke after a millennium is a level 8 beast warrior monster that says, of course, if this card is in your hand, you can place it face up in your spell and trap card zone as a continuous spell. And then if this card is a continuous spell, you can pay 2000 life points or reveal one millennium cross in your hand, special summon this card, then you can add one millennium monster or one Senjujin from your deck to your hand. That's the old vanilla monster. While on the field, it cannot be destroyed by monster effects. This card seems really great as a relatively free searcher and free special summon, and it has a lot of attack points, so it really can put pressure on the opponent. Shield of the Millennium Dynasty is a card that says, if this card is a continuous spell, you can pay 2,000 life points or reveal one Millennium Cross in your hand, special summon this card, then you can add one Millennium Cross from your deck to your hand. While it's a monster card, it cannot be destroyed by spell or trap effects. So already here, you can kind of see how consistent you can get to that Phantom God. You have three copies of the Millennium Cross itself, and you also have three copies of Caveman and three copies of Shield. All of these cards can get you to that big fusion monster, so it should be pretty consistent. Next up, we have the Golem that guards the Millennium Treasures. This one says, if this card is a continuous spell, you can pay 2,000 life points or reveal one Millennium Cross in your hand, special summon this card, then you can add one Temple of the Stone Slabs from your deck to your hand. The activation of your Millennium Cross cannot be negated. We'll take a look at that temple in just a moment here. It is a field spell for this archetype, but I will already say that once again here, we have a free plus with the adding of the field spell. And then while on the field, your Millennium Cross cannot be negated, which ensures you'll always summon that Phantom God. The temple that Golem adds to your hand is a field spell that says, during your main phase, you can place one monster from your hand to face up in your spell and trap card zone as a continuous spell. Then you can place one Millennium Monster or one Senjujin from your deck face up in your spell and trap card zone as a continuous spell. If a face up Millennium Monster or a Senjujin you control is destroyed by battle or effect, you can place it face up in your spell and trap card zone as a continuous spell instead of sending it to the graveyard. The field spell really boosts your consistency and also makes all of your monsters really annoying to deal with. By using Temple's first effect, as long as you draw one Millennium Monster, you can get to whatever other one you need to. The second effect then turns all of your Millennium Monsters into Crystal Beast monsters basically, which really helps you because all of these cards have effects when they're continuous spells. Next up, we have Millennium Moon Maiden. If your opponent activates a card or effect while this card is a continuous spell, you can special summon this card, and if you do, your opponent cannot target level 5 or higher illusion and spellcaster monsters you control with card effects this turn. And then it has the regular illusion effect. If this card battles a monster, neither can be destroyed by that battle. It's maybe not the most exciting card in the archetype, but Moon Maiden does give you an extra layer of protection, which is always nice. Finally, we have Millennium Fiend Reflection. This one says if your opponent activates a card or effect while this card is a continuous spell, you can special summon this card, then you can gain life points equal to half the attack of one monster on the field. And it has the same on-field illusion effect as Moon Maiden. Life point effects aren't usually the most competitive, but I will say in this archetype specifically, you are paying 2,000 a lot of the time, so giving yourself a little little bit more wiggle room to not get OTK'd by the opponent is pretty good. This also gives Phantom God even more attack points because its attack points are based on your life points. I think it's been pretty clear throughout this video, but my first impression of these cards is that they're awesome. I think that they really elevate the Exodia strategy to new heights, maybe not enough to be competitively viable at big tournaments, but I'm excited to see what builds the players come up with for these cards. Anyway, that is all I have for today. Let me know in the comments what you guys think about about these cards. Personally, I find them pretty interesting. Thank you guys so much for watching though. I'll catch you later. Goodbye.